Good morning class this is your science lesson and today we are going to read about science and technology now starting our unit 1 let's explore what science actually is science is the process of acquiring knowledge about how living and non living things work and behave this process has been going on for centuries and will continue forever because there are no limits of knowledge the more we discover the more questions we find the answers to which were previously not known thus for scientific investigation curiosity to know is a basic requirement development of scientific way of thinking For example long long ago people had no idea what the sun was and how it got its heat the nature of the sun was a problem for them but people realized realized that their existence was dependent on the sun they worshiped it as a god but some men had more inquisitive minds they were not satisfied with ex the ex explanation that the sun was a god little by little as they made observation and collected information about the sun and the other heavenly bodies they realized that it was just one of the billions and billions of stars in the universe it just happened to be closer to us than the other stars so it wasn't so unique after all next came the question of how the sun got its heat some people said that there was a huge amount of coal on the sun which was burning this was an assumption or hypothesis which offered a possible explanation to the problem but it didn't take long to disprove this hypothesis it was calculated that if this was so the sun would have burned out in 5000 years and we know that it has been there for a longer time and shows no sign of burning out further observations were made to collect more information on the nature of light emitted by the sun from this scientists discover that the sun consists mostly of the hydrogen gas this baffled them how could so much energy come from hydrogen in the meantime some other scientists were carrying out experiments with particles that existed inside atoms they discovered that under cert certain circumstances atoms could give out huge amount of energy this happened when the particles present inside the atoms were disturbed in certain ways could this be the source of energy of the sun scientists then had another hypothesis that hydrogen atoms in the sun were constantly coming together to form a gas called helium during this process changes took place inside the atoms and huge amount of energy was given out this process is called fusion and it is the source of the sun's energy further observations and experiments proved that this hypothesis was correct it then became the conclusion or the theory having learned so much about what was happening in the sun scientists next wanted to apply this knowledge and see if they could carry out similar processes on the earth they succeeded and made the atomic and hydrogen bomb in the hydrogen bomb which is more powerful than the atomic bomb the process is going on on the sun were duplicated 
Did the scientists stop after that? Of course, they didn't. They know, they now wanted to control this energy. So that it could be used to do some useful work like generating electricity. They have succeeded in using the principle of the atomic bomb to generate electricity. This is an important and useful application of the theory discussed earlier. But till now, it has not been possible to control the energy of the hydrogen bomb. Scientists all over the world are trying to control the large amount of energy given out when hydrogen atoms combine to form helium atoms. Someday this may become possible and when it does, it may solve all our energy problems. The scientific method of study. This step-by-step -step process involved in learning about the sun is an example of the scientific method. Scientists use this scientific method in their research works. The scientific method consists of the following steps. Identification of the problem, making observations, collection of information about the problem, formation of hypothesis, experimentation, formation of theory, formation of scientific laws or principles, formation of a scientific law or principle, applications of the theory or law. Let's study in detail the steps involved in the scientific method. Problem. Scientists often encounter something they cannot understand or explain. They first state the problem. Observation and collection of information. Scientists obtain facts and ideas about the problem from books, journals and other scientists. Personal observations and measurements are made to collect more information about the problem. Number three, hypothesis. Scientists then try to think of a possible explanation of the problem. This is called a hypothesis. It is only a logical guess about based on known facts. Experimentation. Scientists carry out further observations and experiments to test whether the hypothesis is correct or not. In an experiment, observations and measurements are made under certain conditions. At the end of the experiment, if they notice that the hypothesis is not correct, they may modify it or try to make a completely new hypothesis. Theory. Once the hypothesis is proved to be correct, it becomes the conclusion or theory. In due course of time, as better scientific method, scientific tools and instruments become available, more and more observations may be made. It may then be found that the theory does not support the new observations. A new theory may then be needed and the whole process would have been have to be started again. In this way, the process of development of science goes on. Law or principle. Scientific method is an ongoing process. Some scientists try to disprove and reconfirm the suggested theory. If a theory survives from such attempts and continues to be supported by experimental evidences, it becomes a law or principle. Application. 
scientists then try to find useful applications of the theory law or principle so that mankind may get benefits from it for example the theory that if a magnet is moved near a coil of wire an electric current flows in the wire has found applications in the form of generators that supply electricity to our houses. If you look at the picture given on the page, uh, it says the scientific method, it's the general law of the scientific method. It says ask a question, do background research, construct a hypothesis. Test your hypothesis by doing an experiment. Analyze your data and draw a conclusion and then report your results. Was your hypothesis correct? Make a theory if hypothesis is correct. Make a new hypothesis and repeat the process if the hypothesis is incorrect. So this is the general law of the scientific method that you should know. Thank you.